We're right back. It's the Jeff Santo Show. Mark Taylor Canfield's on deck. Santo Show. Thirty-four minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show. I just thought about this. Actually, uh, this is like old times. It's uh, three thirty Eastern. And um, in a lot of times, in a lot of cases, we would start off our day uh, Monday uh, on Tuesday afternoons and uh, going out west to Seattle. Oh, same time. It's a weekday show. It's Sundays with Jeff Santos. And to keep it consistent with Mark Taylor Canfield as well. He, of course, is a great a journalist, Capitol Hill Times, Daily Coast, and now also spending a lot of time doing what you're hearing, playing some great music. In fact, he's just several hours from a show. Mark Taylor Canfield, great to have you back on the show, my friend. Happy Sunday. It's so good to hear you on the air. Jeff, and it does feel like a Teacher Tuesday with the badass teachers on there, and me talking shop, and even though I'm I'm completely exhausted from living the rock and roll lifestyle, I'm here and ready to go. Oh, it's great to have you back. (laughs) Great to have you back, Mark. I, uh, Unfortunately, I don't drink coffee. I'm I'm considered a freak in Seattle because I just don't care for it, but... It sure will. That's what keeps me going, Jeff. Especially well, you today. Know, I, I just uh, I should have I should have emailed you or or connected with you. I just watched the other night as I was uh, having a difficult time uh, sleeping, and I was watching the old movie Singles from the early '90s with Matt Dillon yeah. and Bridget Fonda and all that, which of course was about the great city of Seattle and that and that uh, heart of uh, the grunge movement of Nirvana and. Uh, and of course, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, etc. So, uh, thought of you, my friend. And uh, yeah, you got to drink coffee. It's after all, it's what's uh, the staple of Seattle. But that's all right. I I, uh, I only drink decaf these days, anyways, and tea's better for you, anyway. So, uh, yeah. Occasionally, I'll drink uh, Mountain Dew if I'm really desperate. <laughs> there you go. You get the caffeine one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't suggest it on a daily basis, but you know, in an emergency. It, it beats Starbucks, as far as I'm concerned, at least for a short period of time. It does. But yeah, it does. We, we have a show coming up this afternoon. Yeah, uh, I've been working really hard on that MTC report too on YouTube, and just you know, we're, I'm just trying to get my uh, stuff polished and in all my ducks in a row. It looks like the Paul Allen is going to have a big music festival here in May that he's helping to sponsor called the Upstream Music Festival. There'll be 200 bands, and apparently they're interested in uh, me making some kind of presentation about multimedia and music and the future of the music industry because everything is in flux right now with all the online purchasing and downloads that's going on. So it's a new world for musicians, and I'm just trying to teach people that you can do it yourself. It's kind of going back to the old punk attitude about DIY, um, but with technology. And I know I have to warn the musicians that the learning curve can be really steep at first. But after a while, you get kind of used to the idea of being a ticky, and it's not its not so hard, actually. It's just the time, you know. But any musician now can be can have their own webcast, podcast, videocast, YouTube channel, news network about the band. I mean, there's so many things that you can do now with the media that's available. So I'm encouraging the bands to stop hiding in the basement in Seattle <laughs> and get online. <laughs> get online, get engaged. It's uh, just like the political world. They got to get involved here, and not just uh, sort of uh, you know fade away and do their own thing. Uh, again, we're talking with Mark Taylor Canfield, great journalist, and we've talked so many times about you know uh, the impact that Bernie Sanders had. Uh, remember talking to you outside of Safeco, uh, the great uh, Mariners baseball season, and. and they're off to a good start. I've been watching a few of their exhibition games here. Um, and uh, their season starting next month, of course. Uh, that was a big day for Bernie Sanders, that uh, that big rally that he had, uh, you know, 20,000, 30,000 people. And one of the things that 
I wonder about here in this age of Trump, uh, Mark, um, it, you know, I believe that it's going to be Bernie's folks that are going to sort of change things here uh, on the issue of health care. He delivered a statement today saying that this is a, a joke that the Republicans have put together on health care. Of course, he's been a Medicare for all single payer person. Um, what do you hear from people who were Bernie supporters still are, I shouldn't say past tense, but um, are, are they excited to sort of reinvigorate, uh, you know, to get involved in our revolution, uh, the new group that's been set up by a lot of Sanders supporters or other groups? What, do you, what, are, you, what are you hearing um, from the folks in Seattle and, and Washington State as a whole on this issue? Well, it's funny that you mentioned his stance on health care because there's a, there's a segment at the intro to the MTC report, um, my program on YouTube, that starts out with Bernie Sanders saying, uh, you want to talk about rationing? I'll tell you about rationing. <laughs> There's like 20 million people in this country who can't afford health care. How's that for rationing? So, you know, I, I love yeah. his fiery stand on that issue, and he's never backed down on it. He's always been a, a single-payer health care kind of guy and um i think that that fits well actually with the progressives who have taken over victory for the state of washington uh the ninth Circuit court of appeals in a unanimous decision effectively granted everything we sought um we are a nation of laws and as i've said as we have said from day one that those laws apply to everybody in our country and that includes the President of the United States. Throughout this litigation, the President has asserted that his actions in signing this executive order are unreviewable. Here's what the Ninth Circuit had to say about that. There is no precedent to support this claimed unreviewability, which runs contrary to the fundamental structure of our constitutional democracy. We respect that the President has broad authority when it comes to issuing executive orders, but but they still have to follow the Constitution. That's the bottom line. He can continue to fight this, or he can tear up this executive order and start over. Uh, I would strongly encourage him to consider the latter course of action. But it doesn't mean that he's free to violate the U.S. Constitution. So there you go. We got a governor, um, Jay Inslee, who showed up at the airport during the protests where so the gates were blocked there um, during the immigration ban. Our mayor, Ed Murray, in Seattle, has been very strong in speaking out against the Trump administration. And as um, you know, they're sounding like a resistance party more than you know the usual Democrats. And that that's one thing I think people are worried about. I mean, it's great that Mayor. Murray is threatening to, you know, sue the federal government and is not willing to, to back down on some of these issues, along with our Congresswoman Premier Jayapal and city council members, um, Shama Sawant especially. But the, the fear is, is that the Democratic Party uh, is turning into something other than the party of FDR. And so, therefore, the Berniecrats and progressives in Washington state feel left out to dry. Uh, watching the rest of the, especially the Democratic National Committee, you know, move in a different direction. I mean, there is a lot of resistance against Perez. There's a lot of resistance against the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. And uh, I think that's something that Perez probably fails to recognize and um, may fail to deal with, unfortunately, when the focus is only on Donald Trump and the Republicans. It kind of uh, sidesteps the, the very... Uh, big elephant in the room, the 800-pound gorilla or whatever, which is a dissension within the Democratic Party itself and the the sense that there is lack of leadership coming from the DNC. Yeah. For I mean, it, it really is going to it's going to force you know people in Seattle and around the country to take the lead here. Uh, Mark, since we've uh, got a new show here, we have a break coming up, so we're going to come back. Uh, can take your calls at seven seven two 
nine two. We're tired of cookie cutter conservative talk radio, or just looking for something different. Then join us for Free Talk Live. You can sit back and listen as we open the phones and let any topic on the air, or you can pick up the phone and take control of the airwaves. Unlike those other talk shows, we're not afraid of any issue, and Free Talk Live is not pro Republican nor is it pro Democrat. We're pro freedom. So join us for Free Talk Live, 6 to 9 p.m. daily, live on Milwaukee's News Talk 1510 AM, always live streaming at Newstalk1510AM.com. You're listening to WRRD Waukesha, Milwaukee, News Talk 1510 AM. Together, this is the Jeff Santos Show. Welcome back. 29 minutes past the hour, final minutes here of the program. Again, you can always go to the podcast and listen to the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, we repeat the uh, three hours in the proper order. So 1 o'clock Eastern time when we start the show on the East Coast, uh, you know, ends up being the 4 o'clock hour, 2 o'clock becomes the 5 o'clock, et cetera. By the way, we hope you all... Uh, went ahead and uh, remembered to change your clocks ahead. Um, daylight savings time and have a couple of a lot, lot longer uh, sunshine if it's sunny out where you are right now and then, uh, than not. So hopefully that'll be good. We're having a big storm here on Tuesday, so um, it'll be interesting to see how that works out here with the local MBTA. Uh, talking to our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield out there in Seattle, WA. And, uh, Mark, just to sort of put a, a knot on this here, uh, the, the issue of health care, of course, affects uh, everybody, regardless if you're 18 or 80. But um, a lot of young people feel like, well, I don't need it as much as, say, my father or grandfather does. Uh, do you do you sense is that kind of attitude, or has has the Sanders uh, president presidential campaign uh, has that opened the uh, the eyes of a lot of twenty somethings and millennials? Well, I think it has, especially if you consider that a lot of them are already burdened for you know who knows how long with serious student debt, which is another issue that he was very strong on and still is. So for young folks, they look at it this way. I don't even know how I'm going to afford to pay for college or pay back those loans, let alone pay for medical bills, um, even if it's just the case of an emergency. So it is a concern, and a lot of young folks also are working while they're going to school. Maybe they have a part-time job, or maybe they're not in school at, at the moment, but they're working as a barista or something where they have no medical den- benefits, no dental benefits. So any kind of uh, physical, and where is that money going to come from uh, right now, uh, unless they're on Social Security disability, or unless you're a retirement age, you know, it's pretty tough, pretty tough. Even um, paying for health care yourself, if you have that option through your uh, employer, can be quite expensive. So uh, it's not an easy task. I think, you know, they would, young people would benefit from a single pair of health care just as much as retired folks in the long run, and they know that. Yeah. Do you, it's uh, just a pl- they're playing a waiting game in that in that sense. Uh, just quickly on this, because I, I want to ask you a question about, you know, the fact that the Seattle Attorney General uh, has really led the charge on the whole immigration uh, travel ban issue. Um, but do, do you do you sense that um, that it is important um, for a lot of people who are not familiar with single payer to use it? And we had this uh, one of our callers from California, uh, Mark, talked about this earlier that. Uh, we should start referring to it as Medicare for all, that that's an easier sell. But to young people, who may not necessarily know more a lot about Medicare. It doesn't make that does it does it make a difference? I guess of what kind of wording you use. Well, and there's always been the problem between Medicare and Medicaid too, where state funding oftentimes um, is forced to make up for the shortfalls in Medicare. So. That's always an issue um, when there's cuts in 
in uh, Medicare, and the states can't uh, bridge that gap. People go without uh, coverage, and that's always really sad to see that, especially with things like dental coverage. I mean, come on, this is a supposedly a sophisticated 21st century developed nation, and yet people can't take care of their teeth because it's too expensive, yeah. or people oh, end up I, flying I to Costa Rica or somewhere to get their their dental work done. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Quickly, before we have to run here, um, what what do you make? I mean, uh, it, it seems to me from the outside that, um, you know, the, the Attorney General in Washington State has done a good thing here and opened the door, uh, <coughs> obviously, to the to the courts, uh, uh, regional courts there. Um, what what has been the uh, the take? Has he uh, risen his profile, and what what do, what do you look at from your uh, vantage point? From what I've been hearing from people, he's a local hero now. I mean, he really, and, and I think a lot of folks, even I have to admit, you know, some of the more conservative or, or corporate wing of the Democratic Party are quite proud of the fact that our governor, our attorney general. Um, our state legislators, at least some of them, and um, our city officials here in Seattle have really taken the forefront on fighting this resistance. And so, yeah, Bob Ferguson's uh, political and uh, social capital has grown greatly lately. Yeah, he, he's really seen as a... Or he can just drop the whole thing, and I suggest that he do the latter. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that 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 I think is is a great way to to end the segment and and end the show. Uh, you know that 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 to me says it all. And, and obviously, uh, we need to use that spirit. And hopefully, you know, people in Seattle and Washington State, uh, Mark, uh, uh, led by some of the great journalistic work that you do and others out there in Washington State, will uh, uh, will take Mr. Ferguson and use that sort of excitement. You know, a political uh, political power that uh, that progressives and Democrats have, and utilize it in other areas, and um, uh, and push on through. Uh, great catching up with you, Mark. It's uh, always great uh, to uh, to have you on this show, and uh, we will look forward to talking to you over the next couple of weeks uh, and kind of get more information as we go along. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jeff. Talking to you just made my day. So thanks so much, and shout out to all those folks in Milwaukee, too, listening to Progressive Radio. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to thank Ron Kreider for uh, producing this broadcast with help from Sarah Billingsley on the web. Uh, thank our, uh, our great team in Milwaukee at News Talk AM 1510 for their work. And uh, even though we're not broadcasting at Emerson College anymore, uh, the great work that Jack Casey and Dee Simpson did uh, while we were there. Who knows? We may be back someday. Uh, keep on fighting, folks. Again, podcast at revolutionradionetwork.com. Check us out. All- R.D. Waukesha, Milwaukee. News Talk 1510 AM. Streaming 24-7 at News Talk 1510 AM. And Congress are vowing to move forward on their plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, no matter what the Congressional Budget Office finds as it analyzes their replacement law, on CBS's Face of the Nation, House Speaker Paul Ryan said he expects the CBO report to say fewer people would be covered under the proposed House plan. Health Secretary Tom Price, though, on NBC's Meet the Press, saying that plan won't hurt Americans' wallets. I firmly believe that, that, that nobody will be worse off financially in, this, in the process that we're going through, understanding that they'll have choices that they can select the kind of coverage that they want for themselves and for their family, not that government forces them to buy. Carbon monoxide poisoning is being blamed for the death of an elderly couple in southern Michigan. They've been running a generator indoors during a widespread power outage caused last week by high winds. And authorities in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, say Fire Department Lieutenant Dennis DeVoe, injured in a crash while responding to a fatal fire, has died of his injuries. I'm Chaz Henry. Some serious snows expected in the U.S. Northeast tomorrow and Tuesday, the result of one front of cold air moving across the Midwest. We also have another low coming up from Florida. Around D.C., those two basically meet together. Ecologists have uncovered a 26-foot-tall statue they believe is of an ancient pharaoh. Corresponded Jonathan Mann. Ramses the Great ruled Egypt more than 3,000 years ago, but the quartzite statue was unearthed from this muddy hole in a Cairo slum just days ago. 
Egypt's Antiquities Ministry calls the found pharaoh one of its most important discoveries ever. We found the bust of the statue uh, and the lower part of the head. Uh, and now we removed the head, we found the crown and the right ear and a fragment of the right eye. Archaeologists are now working to recover and restore the remaining 